Hey guys, today on Foodie Friday, we are making creamy artichoke chicken in our Ninja Foodie. Oh, we're having a whole lot of fun. <laughs> Wait a minute, I'm the one that cooked it. Oh, you're right. <laughs> okay. Kitchen. I am Chris from Recipes at Croc.com. I am Mikey from same thing. <laughs> Recipes at Croc.com. <laughs> and today is Foodie Friday, so we are going to show you a nifty little recipe to make in your Ninja Foodie. You could also make this recipe in any electric pressure cooker, so it's an electric pressure cooker recipe. And we're adapting it from a slow cooker recipe that was very, 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 very good, very successful. It went very fast. We cooked it in the RV when we were on our travels. We've cooked it several times. And it doesn't go very very slow at all. It gets sucked up pretty quick. <laughs> so we gotta learn a faster way to make it. That's yeah. what it boils down to. So, um, but one of the things, if you are using a Ninja Foodi, this is one of those recipes where you can use the air fry portion and then switch over to the electric pressure cooker to save some time. Otherwise, um, if you have a regular pressure cooker, you're going to need to cook your bacon um, up either in your oven or your skillet or <clears throat> your air fryer if it's separate. If you're a Ninja Foodie person, we have a video all about how to make bacon in your Ninja Foodie and you do that step first. But we're starting post bacon. Yes, because we had bacon for breakfast, we had bacon for uh, another recipe and well, if you're anything like this, you've got two foodies, and so we were able to do both at the same time. We had two foodies with multiple layers of bacon cooking at the same time. This place smelled amazing. So what we are, what we have down in our, um, <coughs> this is our six quart mm -hmm. foodie, is two to three pounds, more probably closer to the three pound mark, of um, boneless, skinless chicken. We prefer thighs. Um, and it's down in here. Now, I originally was going to do this with frozen chicken. But she originally didn't tell me to put the frozen chicken out. I, so. I didn't tell him that. And there was fresh chicken in the fridge. So he grabbed that instead. So if you're going to do this frozen, I would recommend cooking under pressure once we're done for 12 to 15 minutes. <clears throat> I tend to like to cook it just a little bit longer so it'll be uh, more shreddable. Like really falls apart. I really like that. Um, fresh, you could probably get away with anywhere from 8 to, maybe not with chicken breast, but 8 to 10 minutes. So we're probably going to do the 10 minute mark um, to see, to get it as tender as what we like. But we've got the chicken already down in there. And to that, we are going to salt and pepper it. Meanwhile, Mikey has two cans of artichoke hearts. 14 and a half ounce cans, and I'm just going to do a rough chop on these. You don't have to be precise just to get them in a little bitter little bitter little <laughs> no little, we, don't, we don't want them to be bitter no little bittier that's a word <laughs> somewhere even if i just made it up okay so while he is chopping those up i'm going to add a tablespoon of minced garlic too and while she is adding the tablespoon of minced garlic do you want me to cut this up or is it going to be good no to we're just going to toss it in there okay okay so dump the artichokes in let's just go straight in the pot right over the chicken I love the smell of artichoke hearts. They are. It's. I don't know why, but it's got such a briny, a briny smell mm -hmm. to it. Which probably because I mean, they were briny. Well, they're all they are is they're um, stored in a can with salt and a little bit of citric acid. But for some reason, it always smells like the ocean to me. <laughs> Maybe it's because it's salt water. Alrighty. So one of the changes that we're making to this recipe from the slow cooker version is we because we need a cup of liquid that's going to withstand the pressure so we're going to use chicken broth in this instead of the heavy cream and we're going to make that up with a different ingredient at the end so we've got a cup of chicken broth is going to go in if you have an eight quart you may have to bump that liquid up just a little bit more that poor little lemon's just dancing yeah. over there i'll take care of that uh, okay so what we want to do um with the lemon is we want to zest it before we cut it yes Oh, great. <laughs> so um, this adds just a lot of flavor. So we washed the lemon before yes. we started, and then we rolled it to make sure that... We also took the sticker off, too, because you don't want to zest up a sticker. No. So uh, we, um, we rolled it to make it nice and juicy for when we juice it, but then we're also just peeling the really yellow parts of 
the um, lemon off with a zester. Yes, make sure you don't get into the white. No. So you're just going to do pretty much just one pass over the yellow. Yep. And Add so much flavor. Here, I'll show you. All you're doing is getting this part out right here, just that yellow stuff. Leave the white stuff alone. There you go. I'm gonna add this a little bit more. There. And a half a stick of butter. Just toss it in. Very good. Okay. Slice my lemon in half. And then the juice of that lemon. Oh my word, hey Kim. <laughs> you had a shorter train in your bridal wedding. <laughs> bridal wedding, really? And I'm just gonna take that juice and go all over that goodness yeah. right there. Squeeze that lemon. We should probably show them what it looks like. I guess I could do that. So it's got all kinds of goodness going on in there. So you have that, that briny smell from the artichokes, and now you got that citrus smell from all that lemon juice. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Good stuff right there. Okay, now while Mikey hunts down my pressure cooking lid, I think it's in that cabinet down there. Or, over, or behind the camera, because that's where it belongs. <laughs> um, Found it! What we're going to do is we're going to put this under high pressure uh, with uh, uh, 10 minutes, um, because we're using fresh, and we're going to let it naturally release for 15, and then we'll be back to add our final ingredients. And those ingredients, if you want to go ahead and prep them while we're gone, is a brick of cream cheese. A cup of shredded Parmesan and six, bacon. <laughs> six slices of crisp crumbled bacon. Yes. So we'll see you back here in three, two, one. And we are back and it is time to put on the fixins. Yes. So we're going to lift this lid and everything's all nice and Look cooked at that up. Bubbly goodness right there. Yep. And you can see our chicken is nice and tender. So I'm just going to give this a quick stir. It is very hot, so you've got to be very careful. Yes. To that, we're going to add a brick. Are you going to? Oh, yeah. <laughs> a brick of cream cheese that we have cubed up. And we're just going to stir this in. It's still on the warming feature. If it doesn't melt fast enough, we'll pop it over to saute, but I think we're going to be all right. We're also going to add a cup of shredded Parmesan. And we're going to stir this until it becomes creamy. Um, and then we will top with our bacon. Mm -hmm. And so as you stir, you can kind of uh, shred up your chicken a little bit if that's what, how you want it. Or if you want it in bigger pieces, it's all up to you. But just keep stirring until it becomes nice and creamy. And then, I just really want to put the bacon on it. Yes. That smells so yeah. good. You can smell the chicken, of course, and it cooked in that chicken broth, so it's really, 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 again, chickeny in the room. Chickeny. But then you also smell the citrus and that you smell the, the lemon juice and that zest that cooked into there, and it's just got a really, really, really good aroma. Um, it's It smells fresh, I guess, if that's the best. Mm -hmm. When you cook something with citrus, it's just got that really fresh smell to it. Now, this is low carb. If you aren't... I can't wait. I, I just eat it this way. Um, but if you aren't low carb, you could serve this over rice and it might be very yummy. Or just serve this as a main and maybe with a side or two. I don't know. I kind of like it the way it is. I'm so hungry and I'm just going to eat the bacon. You like would even eat it in like as sandwiches, which is... I put it like in a tortilla, low carb yeah. tortilla. And it's just really, really good. That with a little bit of hot sauce in there. I like it. Mm -hmm. I just like it the way it is. Mm -hmm. All right. I think we are ready. Are you going to show them how, how we're getting nice and creamy here? Sure. I'm going to show you how it's getting nice and creamy. <laughs> all that's broken down. It's all getting, the, yeah. It's melting in there. The cream cheese. Now, like like I said, this is just a wee bit different than the slow cooker version. Just because we wanted to use ingredients that we knew would stand up to the pressure cooker. Um, and so now he can sprinkle in the bacon. Like magic fairy dust of love. Bacon rain. <laughs> Bacon rain, bacon rain. All Very right. good. Steaming up my camera. Now, if you want all that nice sauce, you could do this um, in a uh, with a spoon that's not slotted, and almost it's almost like a little bit of a soup. Um, 
or if you would rather this be more like a main dish, you could serve it with a slotted spoon. It's up to you. Here you go. You take care of that. Right. I will grab us a couple of forks. I pulled out the plate that Addie made for me. There you go. Very good. All right. You know what? You can eat out of that. I'm going to go see you guys. <laughs> I'll get a paper plate. <laughs> so, you see, we have chicken. And there's your artichoke, and then you got all that bacon just scattered through there. Again, it smells so good. Of course, that garlic comes out when you cook it down. Now, I haven't, I haven't tasted it yet, but if it needs more salt and pepper, you can always add that too. So. It's going to be hot too, especially when you get it right out of that cooker. Mm. What you think? The Parmesan is a lot stronger than that than I thought it would be, which is good. Mm -hmm. mm. The citrus is very, very subtle. subtle. But it's there. But it, when you mix it with that Parmesan, it's good. Of course, the bacon gives it that smokiness. And you put it there in the end, so that bacon still got some crispiness to it. If and, you, and leftovers, I'm sure it's going to be good. If you are a big fan of artichokes, I will say I think the artichoke flavor in the pressure cooker version comes out a lot stronger than in the slow cooker version, which is really interesting. I like it. I love it. Mm. I want some more of it. It's nice and tender. So 10 minutes was perfect for us. We wanted that nice, like, fall apart chicken. If you don't want your chicken to quite fall apart, you could probably back off a few minutes on that if you want it to be, you know. And 10 minutes when it's thaw already thawed like that, right. it's not frozen. She just took her spoon and stirred it, and that chicken just fell apart. Right. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're using frozen, again, I would do uh, between 12, it maybe even if you want it to be fall apart, you might even bump it up to 15. That's really good. Mm -hmm. That deserves a high five. Yes. And a smooch. <laughs> Wait a minute. I'm the one that cooked it. Oh, you're right. <laughs> okay. Hey, if you like what you're seeing here, whether it's the good food, maybe us making out, who knows? Oh. Give us a thumbs up down below. Also, if you've not become a member of the Crock Posse, click the subscribe button and you are an automatic member. A welcome part of the team, the family, the tribe that we call the Croc Posse. And also, if you want to know as soon as we put up a new video, click the bell next to it called the Dingling. And when you click the Dingling, we will let you know as soon as we pop up a new video. But most important, y'all, whatever you do, laugh often. Eat good food. And speak life. Bye, guys. Bye. Good job. Thanks. Hey, guys, today for Foodie Friday. Stop that. Hey, guys, today. Okay. You a chainsaw? <laughs> If you want to see the latest, click on the left right here. If you feel like subscribing, click on the right, my dear. And if you think we're funny, enough to send us money, click the Patreon.